Hey guys, it's Darwin, and today we're talking about base weight. What is base weight? Why is it so important? Why do hikers obsess over it? And why is it important for you? Okay, so first off, what is base weight? When hikers talk about base weight, we're talking about the base weight of our pack, all of our gear, except for food and water. Why? Because food and water are constantly changing on a hike. Some days you're carrying more water, some days you're carrying more food. So base weight is basically all of your gear minus the food and water. And you'll hear a lot of hikers constantly talking about it. You'll see videos of, six pound base weight. You'll hear hikers talking about, this is my base weight. And I get questions all the time on why do we measure things in base weight? Why are we so concerned with base weight? Why is it important to us? Why do we obsess over it? And what is the correct base weight for me? So like I said, I get a ton of comments and most of them are usually just general questions. People simply asking, what is it? And I just explain that. But every once in a while, I get certain comments that kind of make me think. So this video was born out of one comment in particular and two weeks ago I posted my big three for the PCT and I got this comment. The only people who are trying to dial down their base weight are YouTube vloggers who have a pissing contest between themselves. So please do not make it sound like everybody is trying to do that. Don't believe me? Watch some of these ultralight hiking videos in which they show regular backpackers in the background you will see that most of them have regular size packs and loadouts. You want to go ultralight, that's fine, but stop making it sound like you need to do that in order to have an enjoyable and successful hike and or through hike. So I got that comment and it got me thinking, you know, all of us vloggers are constantly talking about base weight. And there's a reason for that. It's not because we're trying to have a pissing match. It's not because we're trying to show off new, awesome, ultralight gear from Z-Packs or Hyperlight Mountain Gear. It's simply because it is so important to a long distance hike. The reason most of us focus so much on base weight is because we've done a long distance hike with heavier gear and more gear, and we know the strain that it puts on our bodies. So when you're doing a long distance hike from four to six months, whether it be the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail, or maybe it's even a section hike of the Continental Divide Trail or the Arizona Trail, you're putting your body through a lot of stress getting up hiking every single day, climbing up and down mountains, beating the hell out of your feet, dealing with conditions like snow and rain, being hot, being cold. So it's insanely important to make yourself as comfortable as possible. Let's take a car for example. Let's say you're taking your car and you're gonna drive it up a mountain pass. Completely unloaded, just you and well, maybe your friend in the passenger seat. The car does pretty good getting up the mountain pass. Now take the same car and let's load on a trailer. A trailer that's packed full of stuff. Let's say backpacking gear. It's full of backpacking gear, a kayak, a cooler, a bunch of food, it's loaded down. So what you're hauling is about a thousand pounds. Now drive up that same mountain pass. It's a lot harder on your engine. You can't go as fast. You gotta put on your blinkers and let cars go around you. Why? It's more stress on the vehicle to get up that mountain when it's carrying more weight. And it's no different than your back. So experienced hikers that have been out on the trail and have hiked multiple miles know that for a fact that if you have less weight, the more comfortable you're gonna be carrying it for those longer miles. So it has nothing to do with a pissing match, it just comes down to comfort. And we also know that it's constantly changing because at the end of a, say, four day stint where you've been out in the woods and your food has dwindled down, your pack is obviously getting lighter. But when you get into town and you resupply and you load five more days of food in your pack, it's gonna put a ton more weight on your back. And then if we're talking about the Appalachian Trail, every town that you leave, you have a climb straight out of the town. I don't think I've ever come out of a town on the AT where I didn't have to climb up a mountain. So it's more stress on your body. Let's take trails like the Pacific Crest Trail and the Continental Divide Trail, for instance. On those, you're doing insanely long stretches where you have to carry extra water. 
because they're giant desert sections where they're super dry, there's no streams, there's no ponds, there's no places to cache water every couple miles. So you might have a 15 or 20 mile section where there's no water. So what's that mean? You have to carry more water on your back. Again, putting more stress on your body. So if you can get that base weight down as low as possible, you know that in those situations where you're carrying extra food, extra water, or more food or more water for longer stints, that you're not going to be overloading your back, overloading your shoulders, overloading your hips, and creating something like an injury because you're just wearing your body out. Let's compare it to gaining weight. Now, I personally used to weigh 275 pounds. I was a big guy, and when I was a big guy, it was hard for me to do things like running, like just going for a general hike, riding a bike. Why? I was carrying around more weight on my body, so my body was having to compensate for that and working harder to lug that weight around. Whenever I went through a huge life change and I lost almost 100 pounds, I was able to do physical activities much easier and not have the injuries that I used to have because I was carrying less weight. Now there are some people out there for some reason that think that, well, if I have more weight on my back, I'm going to get a better workout. Listen, if you're hiking the Appalachian Trail or any long distance trail, you're getting enough of a workout. You don't need to add weight to your back uh, to give yourself a better workout. I promise. Go out there with no pack. Go out there supported. You're getting one hell of a workout. So that brings me to another comment that was on that same video. I've got a wax canvas pack. I figure my big three puts me at around 10 to 15 pounds and I didn't really focus on weight. It's kind of like going to the gym and looking hard for a parking spot near the front. What's the point in the hike if it's easy? You need to be light enough to be physically able to do it, but beyond that, you're only hurting yourself. Kenny man, trust me. Like I said, if you have no weight on your back, you're going to get one hell of a workout every single day. Imagine climbing up and down mountains every day from four to six months. That is a huge workout in itself. Look at people like Jennifer Farr Davis, Carl Meltzer, and Scott Yurick. Three people that set a supported through hike on the Appalachian Trail, which means they weren't carrying their gear. It was just them and maybe a little bit of water. Ask them if they had one hell of a workout or not. Look at them at the end of that hike. It's not like they were having an easy time and they felt great and they weren't getting a workout. They were beating the hell out of their bodies every single day, regardless if they had anything on their back or not. And like I said, whenever I was a bigger guy and I went to the gym and I ran on a treadmill, it was much harder of a workout and I beat myself up and I had joint problems in my knees and my feet when I was a bigger guy versus now when I'm a lot thinner and I go to the gym and run on the treadmill, I'm not putting so much stress on my body. So sorry, bud, but that argument doesn't really make sense to me. Now, is base weight absolutely important in every situation? No. No, it's not. And I wanted to make that clear that I am clearly talking about doing something like a long distance hike, whether that's a through hike or a 10 to 20 day section. Now, if you're going out for a weekend backpacking trip, where maybe you're only going out for one or two nights, is base weight as big of a deal? No. Why? You're not out there long enough to put that much stress on your body over and over and over again. Remember, Again, it's overuse injury that creates the problems from having too much weight on your back. Let's take mountaineering for example. If you're going mountaineering, you might only go up the mountain for one or two days, but you need a lot of gear. Ice axes, ropes, harnesses, crampons. You need a ton of gear to make sure you're safe. So that's where you're trading safety for comfort. Absolutely. But again, you're only out there for one or two days. So you're not going to be putting your body through that much stress and you can bounce back from that much faster. And a good example of that is two years ago, me and my buddy Zach went on a snowshoeing yurt trip up in Cumbres Pass, Colorado. Now we knew that we only had an eight mile hike into the yurt and the next morning we were going to have the same eight mile hike out. So was base weight that important then? No, absolutely not. We brought homemade eggnog, we brought elk steaks, potatoes, we brought a stereo, a speaker system so we could listen to music, why? It was more of a luxury hike. We knew we were just going to go hang out at this yurt. So base weight wasn't really on my mind. I really didn't care. Because I know that in that situation, it doesn't matter as much. But for through hiking, it 
means everything. As you know, it's about warm, safe, and dry over ultralight. So, within reason. I think there is a balance between that. Yes, you do need to be safe. You do need to be dry. You do need to be warm. But you can do those things and still stay ultralight and still keep that base weight down so you're having an enjoyable time all the way around. You're being warm. You're being dry. You're being safe, but you're also not injuring your joints. You're not hurting your body and breaking it down faster than what it needs to be. So it's 100% a balance. I'm not saying that you have to go out and have a base weight of four or five pounds like some of these super fast FKT hikers have, but you also shouldn't be ignoring base weight. Backpacking is all about figuring out what type of gear is gonna work for you best in what type of situation. And base weight is definitely an important thing to think about when you're putting that gear together. Now in 2015 on the Appalachian Trail, my base weight was 16 pounds. In 2016, I brought that down to 13 pounds. And for the PCT next year, I'm trying to get down under 10 pounds. Again, it depends on where you're going and what type of trail that you're doing. For the PCT, I know in that first 700 miles, I'm gonna to have to carry a lot of extra water. And then for most of the trail, because you don't have so many resupply points, I'm gonna to have to carry more food at times. So at those times where I'm carrying extra weight, I know that I'm not gonna stress my body out. And is a lot of the ultra light gear super expensive that I use? Absolutely it is. And I'm not saying that that's the gear that you need. There's a lot of different options out there. There's homemade gear that you can make. There's gear that you can pick up from thrift stores or buy off of Amazon, which is why I've done videos like ultra light hiking on a budget because I know how important it is and I wanna help you guys get your base weight down as low as possible. So you don't have to go out and spend a ton of money to drop that weight. You can do it by doing simple things of just taking certain items out of your pack or maybe switching one item for another because this one's just a little bit lighter. And if you guys wanna check some of those videos out, I'll put the link up here in the corner. Like I said, I've started that series of videos for that reason because some people just don't wanna spend that much money on gear. And then that brings us to the question, what is the base weight for me? There's no answer to that. There's absolutely no answer to that. It's all up to you and what you think that you're comfortable with. Some guys are totally comfortable with only carrying five pounds on their back because they're willing to sleep on, you know, a little quarter of a pad just on their back and they don't use a tent. They don't need hot food. So their comfort level is completely different than what yours is. Some hikers aren't that comfortable out on the trail. Some hikers need a big tent and a jet boil stove and maybe an iPad so they can be comfortable and read at night. It's all up to you. All I'm saying is think about your base weight and just know that it is an important factor in how healthy you stay on the trail. All right guys, so hopefully this video will help put some of those questions at rest and make you think a little bit more about your base weight next time you're going out for a hike. A big thank you to those three viewers who left those comments. It really helped inspired a great topic on this video. I love doing that. I love answering your guys' questions and letting us all figure it out together because that's what the hiking community is all about. So is base weight something that you think about on the regular? What is your base weight? Leave it in the comment box below and let me know your thoughts. If you haven't had a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos lately of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout the week, plus some pictures from some past hikes. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, Thanks for watching.